Welcome back guys to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney where we seem to be in absolute peril again as the case was going quite swimmingly with a strike that we didn't really deserve coming in as well. We now reach to a point where yet again things look completely in despair as Emma says, Mr. Wright, do something, please. How can we stop her sister being found guilty at this point? What? What can I do? Your sister has confessed to the crime and she tried to conceal it. But, but Enough. There is no need for further debate. The verdict, Your Honor. Very well. But Angel Star is on the prosecution side. She could have been lying about the water. This court finds the defendant Miss Lana Sky. What? Little girl. What did you just say? Huh? M me Did you say that I, Angel Star, was on the prosecution's side? Well, yeah, you are! You're saying my sister hid evidence by erasing the bloody footprints! Well... I thought you'd had your fill, but here you are, demanding a second helping. Another lunchbox! A lunchbox called Evidence! Wait! Witness! Don't tell me you have something else. Objection! The time for deliberations has passed. Any further comments and you will be held in contempt of court. Your frets don't scare the cough up, Queen. Look at this! A photograph! I had it just in case anyone had the gold to suggest that the white shoe didn't belong to the victim. Hmm. I see no room for error in this evidence. Mr. Wright, wait! Look at the asphalt in this photo! Hey, it's clearly wet! Erasing the last trace of doubt from the court's mind. Immediately after the murder, the crime scene was washed with water! I'm sorry, Mr. Wright. I guess I... I couldn't help after all. It's not your fault. I knew I couldn't win this case in the beginning. And... It seems this is what your sister wanted anyway. I'm sorry, Mia. Right. Wet or not? Don't be so quick to throw in the towel. Really? You're beginning to channel this kind of thing now? Get yourself up off the asphalt. Take another good look. Don't give up. Not until the bitter end! This is the last piece of evidence. It's gotta be something with it then. Very well! This time I'd like to declare verdict for good! Objection! Your Honor, wait! What is it with you people? Can't I hand down my verdicts in peace anymore? Whatever it is, can it, can, well, can it wait? I'm not quite sure. No, no it, it can't. Then it will be too late. You can't really do it after a verdict. You're kind of done at that point. Look at this photograph. The last one submitted. This trial isn't over yet until we give each piece of evidence proper consideration. So, right. Are you saying there's a problem with this latest piece of evidence? Yeah, I'll think later. Yeah. There's a problem. Right or wrong, I've got to go ahead with this. I suppose since we've come this far, we should give every claim a fair shake. Very well, Mr. Wright. Show the court the problem in this photograph. Well, what we're going to show... Bloody man, no shoe on. Hasn't slipped any blood, but the wash water's washed it away. The only kind of ridiculously obvious thing sticking out here, really. Why is that there? That's the only weird thing with the crime scene. It's hard to just get the exact point you want to put it down at, though. There, there we go. Take that. Look for the weird. It's the only thing to do. The problem in this photograph is here. What's this? There's something poking out of the car's muffler. Well, that's a very American word for it. Wait just a moment, Mr. Edgeworth. We call it exhaust pipe. Your Honor, you just said muffler. 
However, I see no trace of a muffler or scarf of any kind in this photograph. A muffler is also a part on a car or motorcycle, Your Honor. Just think of it as part of the exhaust system. A pipe. See, that's what I do. I see, and I see. What's that suspicious looking cloth sticking out of the car's muffler? Hmm. <laughs> so what if there is something sticking out of the muffler? What does that have to do with this case? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Objection! Sorry, mister, but it's not going to be that easy. In fact, you've already told us why this is important to the case. You said as much in your testimony. W what? Let's hear what Mr. Wright has on his mind. Tell us why you think this piece of cloth in the muffler is related to this case. You already told us exactly why. Take that! Mr. Recall your testimony for the court. Ah yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. Well, that's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. Muffler. Ah! Yeah! Could it be that the muffler you heard mentioned was actually this exhaust pipe? If so, that means this piece of cloth is vital evidence. Oh! Ooh, ah. Well, it seems we'll have to suspend the proceedings. S suspend I find myself wondering about that piece of cloth. If we leave any question unanswered here, we do a disservice to the law. Have the car at the crime scene investigated or inspected at once, and bring me that cloth. The verdict will wait until after we've seen all the evidence. Agreed? I suppose so. Phew! That was close. See, first day is all about the doubt. But we made it. At least for now. This court will adjourn for a 30 minute recess. It's lunchtime after all. He's still hungry? Well, it gives me time to think. I'm happy with that, but to be continued has come up. We move on. But there's only a recess. Interesting. Interesting indeed. We're still alive here, Emma. Be a bit happier. Um, Mr. Wright? Huh? What? Are trials always like this with you? Like, you're swimming up from the bottom of a lake, about to reach the surface, but no matter how hard you paddle, you never seem to get there. Pretty much. Except today we're swimming in quicksand. So what happened to your sister anyway? Apparently she got called off to the judge's chambers. Hmm? Probably something to do with that piece of cloth. So, this is where we turn the troll around, right? Our only weapon, a tiny, insignificant piece of cloth. I'm the one who's starting to feel tiny and insignificant, to tell the truth. Hola, partner! Oh, here we go. I gotta get my little lady voice on. They say you show a red cloth to a bull, it'll fire up its temper. Well, that's what they told me when I was a young and at least. Officer Marshall! Before I come take a look, you should say, before I come take a gander. Uh, but you actually said a look-see, which is just as good. And how the trial's going? Looks like I'm late. They've got the home ranch locked down tighter than a fort in enemy territory. Well, that hard to slip out, huh? Oh, wrong person. What is going on over there, anyway? All well, the police I've seen these last two days have been really on edge. Don't you got enough on your plate without worrying about other people, compadre? You could be worrying about the chief prosecutor's tasty mufflers, for example. Um, Officer Marshall? The whole muffler thing didn't have anything to do with scarves. She wasn't even wearing a scarf. You don't say. Now don't that just beat all? I've seen the red breeze blow at her slender neck many a time. I saw it that day too. She was wearing a red muffler. What? At the award ceremony that afternoon. Edgeworth seen it too, I'd reckon. What does that mean? In the photograph taken at the crime scene, she wasn't wearing a scarf. So, 
Mister! Wasn't mistaken. Well, it's about time. Remember, partner? Sometimes you gotta grab the bull by the horns. And sometimes you just gotta let that bull go where it will. Time will tell. Ugh, I have a bad feeling about this. So, what are we swimming in now, Mr. Wright? If it's steak sauce, I can hook you up with some fine ribs. Ooh wee! As we now move back to court. Courtroom number nine, we're relegated. We should be on centre court. I'd like to resume. What's up? The judge keeps looking over at the prosecution. It's something wrong, Mr. Edgeworth. Your face is blue, your lips are purple, you're sweating bullets. That furrowed brow, those grinding teeth, those watery eyes. What's more, your eyes are unfocused, you're doubled over, your back is bent. It can't be! This can't happen! I wonder what happened to Mr. Edgeworth. Well then, I believe it is time we continued on with this trial. During our recess, I had requested that the prosecution conduct an investigation. This is unacceptable! Hmm. It seems our prosecutor is quite beside himself. Uh, uh, excuse me. Knock, knock. Who's this? Who's there? Who are you? Orange Tan? What's with this guy? Oh, he's got... Regal music. Shall he be super posh? Strange stuffy aura seems to be filling the courtroom. Hey, the temperature rose 5.7 degrees when that man came in. Who on earth is he? Why is he so orange? Is he the David Dickinson of the courtroom? No one will get that reference. Ah, it's you! Stop blowing your eyes at me, it's a bit weird to be honest. Oh, oh, ha! <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Aji! The rows were packed, it's just me! Long time no see, eh, Aji? How you been? Swim much these days? Ah, hello, hello. No, I've been so busy. Busy, busy smizzy, Aji. My boy, you have to make time to relax. Yes, yes indeed. Aji, seems to be his nickname for the judge. I'm afraid you're right, very afraid. Um, sorry, but... Who are you? Aha! So you're Righto, the attorney! I've heard good things about you, son! Uh, 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 thanks? So sorry about our little worthy giving you all that trouble, eh? You know, we should all go swimming together sometime. Jolly! L little worthy? Mr. Wright! You don't know the district chief of police? Ch chief of police? He's the top-ranking police officer in the entire district! Flutters his eyelashes as you, you know. Beautiful piercing eyes. Name's Gant, Damon Gant. Pleased to meet you, everyone. So, uh, to what do we owe this honor today? It's been over two years since you last came to this courtroom, hasn't it? Well, it's worthy here. Look at the poor fellow. I just thought I'd help out. I bring this. Hey, but that's my sister's muffler. So Miss Star wasn't just seeing things. When the crime occurred, Miss Sky really was wearing that muffler. But to think that it was stuffed into that exhaust pipe. On Little Worthy's car, no less. It's really quite embarrassing, even for us. What's this? It's what you'd call a switchblade knife. Quite perplexing, this. Objection! Chief, what kind of outfit are you running? M Mr. Edgeworth, how could they miss such a vital piece of evidence? If your investigators are this lax, how do you expect us to do our job? Now, wait a minute, Worthy. I've no desire to hear your excuses. I'm telling you to wait. Or didn't you hear me? 
Have a look at this document, where it says, Person in Charge of Investigation. There's no mistake in that signature, is there? Miles Edgeworth? That's not fair. On the day of the crime, I... I had... Your head in the clouds because you got that award! I know how you feel. But you're the person in charge. I'd expect a written apology. What? Are you serious? Don't be too upset. We'll find a way to clean up this mess that you made. This is the first time I've seen Mr. Edgeworth at a loss for words. This kind of major blunder is unlike you, Mr. Edgeworth. Gah! The court accepts this new evidence. But I'd like to ask the defense a favor first. Yes? Just to be sure. I'd like to take a look at the blade of this knife. The blade Your Honor? Well, I don't see why not. Could you open it up for me, I wonder? Yes, well, I think all you have to do is push that switch and... If I cut my finger, Mr. Wright, I wouldn't be able to pound my gavel anymore. Yeah, but if I cut my finger, I wouldn't be able to point it at people anymore. Not without, you know, contamination. Blood everywhere! Come on, just hurry up and open it. Okay, let's open it then. Or, you know, do it for me. It's doing everything for me. Right, apart from now, I want to read this bit as well. There's a small tag on this knife. It seems to say SL92. What does that mean? Well, I've heard something similar. It's a code for a case. DL6 of DL6 incident fame. But it's strange. Huh? What is? I'm not certain, but I get the feeling I've seen this somewhere before. Letters like this, or letters that looked a lot like this, somehow. Okay then, what's with the wet patch here? It's what I'm wondering as well. So of course we can see the end of the knife coming towards you in stereoscopic 3D. What well, we're looking to press, of course, is here. What? Don't scare me like that! I'm the one who's scared! Look at this knife blade! The tip is broken off! And this dark red stain. Blood? Blood just soaked into the knife that bad. Okay, switchblade knife with blood on it. This does not excuse the actions of the police department. I would like to hear an explanation from the chief of police himself. I'm terribly sorry, but could I ask you to testify for us? About the split between the prosecutors and the police and this knife. Sure, sure thing. Not a problem, really. Not even a little one, really. A department in disorder. Why is this relevant? This knife is special, but I can't say how here. Unless there's evidence to prove a connection between this knife and Goodman. That was a bad day for the department. We weren't in any shape to do an investigation. A detective was killed at the police department. See, what a mess. The time of the crime? 5.15, scary coincidence, eh? It's not officially linked to this here case, so I can't talk much about it. Oh? It's like you brought something deliberately to be linked, especially with your first sentence. There, there was a murder at the police department? A detective? That's hush-hush information, Aji! We haven't exactly announced it yet. Objection! W wait a second. You said 5.15. That's the exact time the Detective Goodman was killed at the prosecutor's office! Order! 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 Anyway, we at the department were all flustered, as you might well assume. We're in the middle of a top, top secret investigation! Don't tell anyone, okay? I think we understand the police department's situation. Well, Mr. Wright. Two detectives killed at the same time in two different places. The chances of that are really slim, scientifically speaking, of course. I'd like to exercise my right to cross-examine the witness. Very well. However, keep your questions focused on the case at hand. Well, I want more questions. I want to question all. So with a department in disorder and a cross-examination about to begin, we begin the music as we begin another episode next time. What on earth is going on in this case? Edgeworth seems completely distraught with this turn of events. 
and a police chief that's coming over pretty much seems to be handing something to us at this point in time. Join me next time as we figure, well, find out more. Maybe I should check out that red muffler too. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.